Hey everyone, it's Mr. Southern coming at you with a lesson on Unit 6, uh, Lesson 12. I want to get things going for you because um, this is kind of the combination of everything you need to know, um, at least so far, with um, the for loops. Okay, so I'm going to get this going and kind of show you what's happening, and then I'll get you the starter code to get things going. Okay, because I know a fair amount of you are still stuck. All right, first things first. We got this thing happening. We have an app we're supposed to make, and it is the random forecaster. Part one, you're just supposed to see what's happening, and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And you'll see that when I hit the get forecast button, it produces a city, a high temperature in Fahrenheit, low temperature in Fahrenheit, some sort of image of a sun, and then the forecast that the sky is clear. As I keep hitting get forecast, you'll see all of these change depending on the location. So this is for the weather tomorrow. Okay in Boston, for example. Now I'm gonna to go to the actual coding, which is in module two. This starts with a blank canvas, so I'll go ahead and just start it over real quick. Whoops, try that again. So I'll just start over here. So for sure we have a completely blank canvas to work on. Okay, so now I have to actually make the coding happen, okay? So in order to do that, there's a couple things I see. First off, when you go to data, there's a place where all of this information is coming from, right? And you won't see it here because it's just the code. If I go to data and I go to this daily weather, you'll see that there's a state, a city, forecast number, which I'll go in in a minute, the date, condition, an icon, which is like the image of what it looks like. Like if it's clouds, it'll show clouds. There'll be a low temperature, high temperature, et cetera, et cetera, all right here. So we need to basically pull a bunch of lists from this and then do something with the list. Okay, so here's my game plan and something you need to focus on. If I can scroll in a bit, let's see, well, let me, it won't let me zoom in. And, oh, there it goes. I'm just trying to zoom in a little bit so you can watch it on YouTube. But do you notice that um, we have, for example, I need to, so for the dates, today is Friday, February 22nd, okay? Uh, or sorry, Friday, February 23rd. That's today's date. And if this thing stops moving around for a second, there we go. You'll notice that tomorrow is Saturday, February 24th. Something you'll need to use is this forecast number. At first, I kind of just blew past it, and I was like, I have no idea what forecast number is, so I just ignored it. And then a student of mine pointed out, hey, because I was hunting for the dates, we notice that forecast the forecast numbers goes from one, two, three, four, five for Anchorage, and then it resets back to one for Fairbanks, Alaska. What it's showing is forecast number one is going to be today's forecast. Forecast number two is going to be the for weather forecast for tomorrow. So originally when I coded this by myself, I just went after the date as a text. But I realized that code.org was nice enough to put in tomorrow's date, whatever it is, because it updates every day, to be correspond to forecast number two. Okay, so what does that mean for you? Well, when I go back to the actual code, if it allows me to, I basically need to build the random forecaster app, and I'm going to build the various functions. Or sorry, not the various functions, the lists. How do we do that? Just go to variable. And I would go ahead and declare um, a lot of these lists kind of like here, right? And I'm going to need one for city, one for high, one for low, one for the condition, one for the picture, right? So I'm going to need a lot of them. So I'm going to go ahead and just start making one just to show you. Some of the first list I'm going to make is let's do, um, let's do forecast number, right? Because I do need to go through that. That's really the, the main thing that I need to focus on if it'll let me type. So I'm going to make a list called var forecast number, and I'm going to go ahead and put in this data for get column. What this allows me to do is it allows me to access that table called daily weather, and it allows me to choose any column that I want. And for this one, I'm going to look for the forecast number. I need to get the forecast number for sure because I need to find all the number twos. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this for every single one of these, okay? And I'm just going to go to show text. Let's go ahead and just copy this over and over, okay? So I'm going to copy it, go to the end, and I need one for city, I need one for the high, the low, the picture, and the condition, okay? So let's go ahead and rename these. I'm going to go back to show blocks. 
So let's call this city list, right? City. We want a list for the high temperature, low temperature. We want one for conditions. Condition. And then we want a list for um, the picture, right? So all of these are lists that we're going to go ahead and grab from the um, the tables, right? So you got city there. We have high temp here. So I need to do that for one for each one of these. Okay, so on and so forth. So condition. So once I have all of these chosen, okay, um, we are going to, so we have these lists and they're going to be brought over. Let's do the icon. All right. So all of these lists merely grabbed everything over. So these are going to be filled up. Now what I'm going to do is I need to do something with this. So basically what I'm thinking is I need to go through or traverse the one dimensional list, right? Under forecast number. And wherever I get that value for forecast number, I'm going to go ahead and set it, see if it's equal to two. So let's start with that. So I'm going to go to control and I'm thinking if anytime I want to go through a list, I need to use this um, for loop. Okay, so I'm going to make a for loop to go through the various lists. Okay, so we're going to set var i equals zero. This is going to show me i is going to keep running until I get to the end of pick a list, any list, all of these are the same. But since I'm kind of targeting the forecast number, I'm going to go ahead and go to the end of the forecast number. So we use the dot length. And what that does is it's going to tell me, hey, keep running this for loop until I get to the end of the list called forecast number, right? So that's the number we're going to run to the end of that list. So if forecast number is a list that's 100 numbers long, it's going to run until my variable I becomes or hits the counter for 100. Every time I'm done with the loop, I'm going to go ahead and add one more to my index value. Now comes the fun part. I want to know, hey, if that forecast number is equal to one, then I'm going to go ahead and do, or equal to two, then I want to do something. So again, if that value, so if forecast number, and I'm going to go ahead and do a hard bracket and the letter I, right? Because that's the number that's changing, right? Let me just click out of this and see what shows up. If that is equal to, and I'm going to use this double equal sign, right? So if that guy is equal, uh, hold on, let me get rid of that. If that is equivalent, I'm going to go to show text. So it's forecast number bracket I. If that is actually equal to the number one or number two, I'm sorry, then we want it to do something. So again, the double equal sign is what you want to use because that's asking the question, are these two equal or not? Okay, so for forecast number, Bracket zero, that's the very first element. If I go to the data, if it'll let me get there, right? So the very zeroth element here is the forecast number is one. Is that two? No. So then I'm going to X or I'm going to loop again. And now instead of uh, index number zero, because we start counting from zero in Java, I'm going to go to index number one. And you'll notice that the forecast number there is two. Once I find that, I want to go ahead and grab all of these values for my... Um, for my list okay so again once i found that we have forecast number uh, is equal to two i want to grab all the information for that row and i want to put it in my filtered list so one thing i realized i haven't made yet is i need to make a list right so let's go ahead and do another um comment so i need to make my filtered lists there's multiple ways to do this, by the way, but this is the one that seems most efficient now that I've gone through it a couple of times. Um, and so to do that, we're going to go ahead and do all this var, go to variables, and we're going to go ahead and create a bunch of these lists. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and declare them. I don't need to fill them with anything. So I would call it filtered, if it'll let me, I'll call it filtered city, right? Because I don't need to find the filtered number anymore. I just need to find a bunch of these. So I need filtered. I need a one for the filtered city, one for the um, filtered high temp, one for the low temp, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'll pause my recording. Okay, so I went ahead and made all of those filtered lists, right? Filtered city, filtered high temp, filtered low temp. So once forecast number at that index value is equivalent to two, I want to go ahead and add 
right? I'm going to do this append item. So for filter city, I'm going to go ahead and pull up filter city because that's the list. And then what do I want to append? What do I want to add to that list? I want to put in that value for the actual city, right? So the original list that I'm looking at is city. So I'm going to go ahead and do the city. And I'm going to do the hard bracket I, right? So that's the value in that index for the city, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do that for every single one of these. So I'm going to do this five times in total, okay? And I'm going to pause just to cut down the time. Okay, so now I have done it so that if that forecast number is equivalent to two, then I'm going to go ahead and append item to all of my filtered lists. Whoops, I forgot to change the name. Oh, yeah, to uh, we're going to append item to filtered high temp. I'm sorry, I messed up on there. I copied and pasted in the wrong spot. Let me go ahead and make that change, and I'll pause it again. Okay, so you see, I made those changes now, and we should be able to run this thing. Now, keep in mind, I have no on event maze. So let me go ahead and do that, um, right? Because once I hit get forecast, nothing's happening still. So let's go ahead and bring all that in here. I guess I can make a function as well. But on the event, I click that forecast button. I want this thing to run. So let's see what happens. Okay, and nothing's going to show because I still need to do set properties. But let's go ahead and pull a filtered city. Just to check. And for some reason, nothing's happening. What's going on here? This should work. Um, did I miss anything? So we have filtered picture, picture I. I feel like I'm missing something. Let me see. So they got high temp. Okay, so there is a list of all of those high temperatures that's going to be in there. It looks like there's 610 of these. Um, so it's going ahead, going ahead and putting it in. I'll have to debug. I'm not sure. I must have a typo somewhere. But once you click that get forecast button, it should be able to fill all of these values, uh, provided that the forecast number is equivalent to two. Let me just check one thing real quick. There we go. So, I mean, all of these things are putting in 610 values, which makes sense that they're corresponding. Um, but this is basically it. So again, you're going to find the forecast number for I, right? If that's equal to two, wherever that happens, I'm going to go ahead and append item there. Okay. Um, and that sh that'll work. But so get that going first. And then what you're going to do is once you have these lists figured out, then you're going to do the math.random. This guy, and you're going to go ahead and choose a random number. And then you're going to use that random number to select one of these values. So let me show you that real quick. So I'll probably just make another function. Let's just call it random number generator. So random generator, right? And I'm going to go ahead and let's declare a variable. Uh, what's called var x. And I'll put it all the way at the top just because I like to have my variables there. So maybe random number, right? what we'll call that. And let's go ahead and set it equal to zero. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter right now. So I'll just leave it var random number. And then what you can do down here, if it'll get me there, sorry, the internet's kind of slow, is we could do, hey, take that random number, and I want you to, or take that value called random, or that variable called random number, and go ahead and generate a random number, okay? And we're going to generate it from the number zero, right? Because there's this, the index number starts at zero in JavaScript. And you go to the end of, say, pick one. So filtered picture, right? Uh, dot length. And then it will choose that random number. Once you have that random number, then you can go ahead and do set property to show, um, and this will be in a different function, but you can do a set property to say, hey, I want to set property for, um, I don't know why it's being so slow here. Okay. Oh, sorry, set text, my bad. So again, this would be in the on event for clicking the get forecast, right? You would have, uh, what is that city output, right? Would show. Would show filter city, right? And then you would do a bracket with that random number. So it would show that element. 
And when you run this thing, you'll see that it gave me an error. I don't know why. Set text parameter undefined. It's not a UI string. Looks like I need to probably do a different. Uh, it didn't like my filtered city. Let me just erase that. And this is part of the problem with JavaScript. So let me reset so it doesn't get mad. I'm trying to tell it to, hey, show that list value. Um, here we go. Let's see if it will take that. So again, filter city, and that'll be random number. And that should work once we run it. Um, and then again, you'll produce it. But I've given you more than enough code. This is kind of the gist of it. Um, let me know if you still have questions.